Hello YouTube and welcome to the next root learning video. I've actually been away for the last week which is why there's been a bit of a gap between uploads but I'm now back and I'm hoping to get a couple of videos up this week. I realised last night that I haven't actually done a South London commuter journey in a while and there's a large variety of routes and trains to be covered on this channel as I'm trying to cover every possible journey you can think of. So today we're going to be driving in a Network Southeast Class 455 in a fantastic scenario by Armstrong Powerhouse and we're going to be travelling from Coulsdon Town to London Victoria a distance of around 15 miles. We're going to be calling at Reedham, Purley, East Croydon, Selhurst, Thornton Heath, Norbury, Streatham Common, Balham, Wandsworth Common, Clapham Junction, Battersea Park and finally London Victoria. The Class 455 has been in service since 1982. It was built at Brell York and it is a BR second generation electric multiple unit. A total of 137 of these trains were built and there are four coaches per train. The current operators of the Class 455 are South West Trains and Southern. The maximum speed of these trains is 75 miles per hour, though we won't be able to get up to that on the journey today. Once in the cab of the Class 455, there isn't actually a huge amount of setting up to do, so I'm just going to put the train into forward and then reset the AWS self-test sequence. As you've seen already, I've already put the headlights on. As this isn't a natural starting point for trains here, we're actually on the Tattenham Corner branch, which I believe there's another three or four stations behind us to the end of this line. And once I've opened the windows, which you've just seen me do, we're now almost ready to depart. So just to point out, we have a standard four-step power controller and a West Code three-step brake, which if you're familiar with my videos by now, you'll know that I try and only use up to step two braking, though there may be a couple of points on this journey where I have to use step three braking, which is the full service setting. So departing Coulsdon Town, the starting speed limit is 20 miles per hour, and we've got just over three quarters of a mile to go to our first stop, which is Reedham. Now that we've reached 20 miles per hour, I've just idled the power to allow the train to coast until we're able to accelerate further. The speed limit is shortly going up to 60 miles per hour, as you can see just here. To our right now we have the up and down fast of the Brighton Main Line and to the far right the up and down slow of the Brighton Main Line. We will actually cross under them in a couple of minutes. So here at this set of points coming across now, we can now accelerate up to the 60 mile per hour speed limit. As we reach 40 miles per hour, I'm going to idle the power and allow the train to coast. And we're going to use the next signal as our braking point for Reedham. Approaching Reedham, we're actually going to be going down as steep as 1 in 61, which makes this a more challenging stop than usual, and which means I'm going to have to use step 3 braking to help control our speed. So now we're just before the signal, I've just gone into a full service brake application to bring our speed off. Now I'm going to reduce to step 2 to see what happens. Looks like I brake slightly too early there. But as you can see the forecast stop sign is now coming up on the left and we need to try and stop next to that. Thank you. 
As we depart from Reedham, we are still on a downward gradient of 1 in 61, so we don't need a huge amount of power. And in fact, I've only put it into step 1, and now as we get to around 10 miles per hour, I'm going to shut off power and allow the train to gradually coast up to the speed limit. As you can see, the speed limit has now dropped to 20 miles per hour. After we've rounded this right-hand curve, we will then be passing under the Brighton Main Line, as I mentioned a short while ago and then we will re-emerge on the other side and turn left as we head towards Purley Station. Now that we've reached 20 miles per hour, I've just applied one step of braking to ensure that we don't break the speed limit. As we get down to around 17, which is where we are now, I'm now going to release the brakes again and allow the train to coast. And now as we round this curve to the left, the gradient is actually levelling off and then it's going to start going uphill as steep as 1 in 45. So I've given us a step of power to see what happens, we're still accelerating slightly. So I've just reduced that and now I've reapplied power once again. And you can see we're not really accelerating now as we're on this steep uphill gradient. The line now joining us from the right is the branch from Caterham. The gradient has now levelled off here so I've just shut off the power to ensure that we don't accelerate and we can coast from here. As you can see the platforms at Purley are just coming up. You can now see the 3 and 4 car stop sign just coming up, so obviously I'm going to be aiming to stop next to that. Departing from Purley, the starting speed limit is 20 miles per hour, and we've got just over 3 miles to go to our next stop, which is East Croydon. The speed limit is now going up to 25 miles per hour. However, we won't be able to accelerate until we reach the next point just after this one, so I've just idled the power temporarily to allow the train to coast. And now we're crossing this point here, I can now accelerate up to 25 miles per hour, so I'm just giving us one step of power to do that. On these last points just here, going to the left, we can now accelerate up to the new speed limit, which is 60 miles per hour. Now that we've got a couple of minutes between stops, I just wanted to explain a bit more about what I'm hoping to do over the next uh, week or two. So, as I mentioned earlier, I'm going to be making hopefully a couple more videos this week. The first of which should be a journey on the fantastic freeware Barnstable to Exeter route, which is available from DP Simulation. And secondly, I plan on making something for my American subscribers, because I have a few since uh, one of the most popular videos on this channel has proved to be the Miami to West Palm Beach route. So I'm hoping to make something for the Americans too. Just to say we're now passing through Pearly Oaks. Now that we've reached 60 miles per hour, I temporarily idled the power to allow the train to coast. And then I'll reapply power as we get down closer to 55. Something else that I've done now is I've started a Patreon page for the PTG Rail project. So if you really do like these videos, which of course are completely free and always will be, 
then you are able to donate money to the project to allow me to purchase more DLC and ultimately hopefully a better computer to allow me to make a wider range of videos which are much better in quality. So I'll be posting a link to that in the description of this video and if you would like to then, then please do donate to the project but uh, don't feel compelled to at all. I just appreciate the fact that people are watching these videos and I'm, I'm gaining subscribers now from this. And I have to say that these train simulator videos have proved to be far more popular than I ever anticipated when I started this project three months ago. The line that's just joined us from the right is the line from Uckfield, East Grinstead and Oxted, and we're now passing through South Croydon Station. At this point I'm going to shut off power to allow the train to coast, as the speed limit will shortly be dropping to 45 miles per hour. And we need to brake for that just after the next signal, which you can see just coming up now. So I've just applied one step of braking to slow us down towards the 45 mile per hour speed limit. I've now released the brakes at 45 miles per hour and as you can see we're entering the speed zone now. I will shortly be braking for our stop at East Croydon. You can see the platforms East Croydon coming up just ahead. did just temporarily go up to step 3 braking for a moment there, as I felt we were just coming in slightly too quick. And you can see the 3 and 4 car stop sign just coming up on the left here. Departing from East Croydon, the starting speed limit is 45 miles per hour, and we've got just under one and a quarter miles to go to the next stop, which is Selhurst. Something else which I'd also like to mention is that if you haven't already connected with me there, you can find me on Facebook now under the name PTG Rail. It's a great place to go if you'd like to like the page and you'll get updates on what I'm planning to do next. At this next signal gantry just coming up, I'm going to idle the power as we're now at the 45 speed limit and the speed limit will shortly be dropping down to 40 miles per hour. We're about to be on a climbing gradient which will actually help us to slow down a little. And you can see the 40 mile per hour speed ball just coming up so I've applied one step of braking to ensure that we slow down in time. Off to our right now is the line towards London Bridge and as we round this curve towards Selhurst we will actually end up on a downhill gradient as steep as 1 in 45. So I'm now going to leave the power off and I'm probably going to have to use some braking to control our speed as we go down here. So I've just applied one step of braking now just for a bit of speed control and now released and we should be okay. You can see the platform at Selhurst just coming up now. I've once again had to make a step 3 brake application because I felt like we were coming in a bit too quick. Thankfully that is more normal on start to stop commuter services than it is on um, slower into well faster but uh, less regular stop into city services
Departing from Selhurst, the starting speed limit is 40 miles per hour, though quickly going up to 60, as you can see just ahead. And we've got around three quarters of a mile to go to the next stop, which is Thornton Heath. This section of the route between Selhurst and Streatham Common has already been covered in another video, which was a journey in a class 455 uh, from West Croydon to London Bridge. If you are interested in watching that, then if you look on my channel for South London Network 4, uh, then that is the video in which this short section has been covered already. As we reach 45 miles per hour, I'm going to idle the power as the speed limit will be dropping to 45 just before the platform at Thornton Heath, which is coming up just through the bridge you can see. And now you can see the platform just ahead. So I'm now going to make a step to brake application to bring our speed down. I've once again had to use step 3 braking as we're getting closer to the forecast stop sign. I find it's actually quite difficult to judge on this route exactly where the braking point should be. Departing Thornton Heath, the starting speed limit is 45 miles per hour, though quickly going back up to 60 miles per hour. And we've got around one and a quarter miles to go to our next stop, which is Norbury. As you can see, we're now passing a 60 mile per hour speed board, so our speed limit has now gone up to 60. As we reach 55 miles per hour, I'm now going to shut off power to allow the train to coast. We're going to be braking for the station at Norbury shortly after this next signal that we're about to pass. I've now made a step to brake application as you can see the platforms just ahead. Here at Norbury the stopping point is actually right at the end of the platform so we can enter the platform slightly faster than some of our other stops. Just had to release the brakes for a moment as it seems we slowed down just slightly too early. And you can see the CCTV monitors now coming up at the end of the platform. And we need to stop by them and the S marker which you can see just on the left. Departing from Norbury, the starting speed limit is 60 miles per hour, and we've got just under one mile to go to the next stop, which is Streatham Common.
see we keep passing a lot of class 47s with rakes of Mark II coaches. Armstrong Powerhouse in this scenario have actually used them in the place of the Gatwick Express, which used to be a class 73 uh, with rake of Mark II coaches. So I idled the power at the signal that we just went past, and now you can see Streatham Common Station just coming up. The speed limit is dropping to 45 miles per hour just before the platform, and I've had to use step 3 braking to bring our speed off as I found it difficult to discern a specific braking point for Streatham Common, so it's more a case of just brake as you see the station. You can see the forecast stop sign now coming up on the left. I think this is about the right place. Departing Streatham Common, the starting speed limit is 45 miles per hour and we've got around 2 miles to go to our next stop, which is Balham. And I believe that this will actually be the longest distance between stops all the way from here to London Victoria. The speed limit is now going back up to 60 miles per hour. As we reach 60 miles per hour, we're now going to shut off power and allow the train to coast. And in fact, we can now coast pretty much all of the way to Balham. The speed limit will be dropping down to 40 miles per hour shortly before the station at Balham. I've now applied one step of braking to help us slow down and I'll increase that to step two if need be as we see the 40 mile per hour speed board. As it seems step one was just the right amount of braking there, we're now entering the 40 mile per hour speed zone. The line from Streatham Hill is now joining us on the right and you can see the station at Balham just coming up ahead of us. At Balham, we need to stop closer to the end of the platform at the S car marker. Departing from Balham, the starting speed limit is 60 miles per hour, and we've got just over half a mile to go to the next stop, which is Wandsworth Common.
So we've just gone from the longest gap between stations, between Streatham and Balham, to the shortest gap between stations on this journey, between Balham and Wandsworth Common. As we reach this right hand curve just here, I'm now going to idle the power to allow the train to coast and you can see the platforms at Wandsworth Common now coming up. So I'm now going to make a step 2 brake application to bring our speed down. And once again here at Wandsworth Common we do need to stop at the end of the platform at the S car marker. Departing from Wandsworth Common, the starting speed limit is 60 miles per hour, and we've got around one and a third miles to go to the next stop, which is Clapham Junction. We now have a warning for a drop in speed limit to 20 miles per hour, so at the board I'm now going to idle the power and allow the train to coast. We don't need to slow down for that for a, a few seconds yet. Unfortunately for those who do drive with the HUD on, the 20 mile per hour speed limit here is marked as happening after the platform at Clapham, but it actually comes into force before the platform at Clapham. So I'm going to apply the brakes at this overbridge just coming up and that should slow us down about right. So I went initially into a step 2 brake application because I wasn't 100% certain of the distance and I've now reduced to step 1 which should bring us down to 20 just in time. We're now at 20 as we enter the 20 mile per hour speed zone. So we're now arriving into Clapham Junction which is known as Britain's busiest railway station in terms of the total traffic that passes through here. At peak times 180 trains an hour pass through Clapham Junction station of which 117 of these stop.
Departing from Clapham Junction, the starting speed limit is 20 miles per hour, and we've got around one and a half miles to go to the next stop, which is Battersea Park. I've temporarily cut off the power at 20 to ensure that we don't break the speed limit and we can accelerate up to the new speed limit which is 60 miles per hour on this point which is going left just here so now we're on this point I can accelerate up to the 60 mile per hour speed limit that being said the speed limit will shortly be dropping down to 45 miles per hour so as we get to 45 I'm going to shut off the power to allow the train to coast Now that we're at 45, I'm idling the power, and we've just entered the 45 mile per hour speed zone. We will shortly be climbing on a gradient of 1 in 84 as we round this right hand curve here. So I am going to need to use step 2 power to try and ensure that we don't lose too much speed. The gradient is now levelling out, so in a moment I'm going to shut off the power and allow the train to coast all the way to Battersea Park Station. We're now passing over the lines to London Waterloo, which are going to the right there below us. And you can see Battersea Power Station just ahead with the four chimneys on top. You can now see the station at Battersea Park coming up, so I'm making a step three brake application as the breaking point for Battersea Park is when you see the station itself. And I'm now reducing the brakes as we come into the station. The four car stopping point here isn't actually marked properly, but if we look we can see the CCTV monitors coming up on the left, and that's the position I'm going to use for stopping in a four coach train. Starting from Battersea Park, the starting speed limit is 45 miles per hour, and we've got just under one and a quarter miles to go to our final stop, which is London Victoria. The line now joining us from the right has come from the direction of Denmark Hill and London Bridge, and in fact this section now between Battersea Park and London Victoria has also been covered in a previous video, which is South London Network 2, which is the journey from London Bridge to London Victoria in a class 455. As we reach 40 miles per hour, I'm going to idle the power and allow the train to coast. The speed limit will shortly be dropping to 20 miles per hour. Just after the double yellow signal you can see coming up just ahead. We're also now crossing the River Thames. I'm now making a step 2 brake application. In fact I'm going to go up to step 3 to ensure that we slow down in time. And now back to step 2. As we approach London Victoria from this direction, we are going down on a gradient of 1 in 62, which is why I've slowed us down to 15 miles per hour to release the brakes. The train will slowly pick up speed back up towards 20. And if we get to 20 miles per hour, I will make a step 1 brake application, just to ensure that we don't break the speed limit.
So as you can see I'm just fanning the brakes here between step one and then released to try and maintain our speed. The single yellow signal just ahead with a number nine above it indicates that we are cleared into London Victoria platform nine. And you can now see the platforms of Victoria coming up ahead of us. I believe that platform 9 is the last platform, uh, oh, platforms 9 to 18 at London Victoria are for services operated by Southern Trains as it is today and from platforms 1 to 8 are the southeastern side with trains going into Kent. So as we're going into platform 9 we're in the last of the Southern Region platforms before the Southeastern Region platforms begin. So I'm just allowing us to coast into the platform here at Victoria. I'm gradually going to bring our speed down. Now that we're entering the platform, I'm going to slow to 15 miles per hour and now release the brakes. As we approach this wall on the right now, I'm going to slow us down further to 10 miles per hour using a light step one brake application and then release. And as we get closer to the buffers, I will apply light braking to bring our speed down. You have to be careful with this train as you actually look slightly further away from the buffers than you are. In some trains, it's th other trains it's the opposite way around, but it's actually fairly easy to hit the buffers on this train if you try and aim to stop too close. So I'm aiming to stop with the red lights there just disappearing to the side of the window and this is about the right place. Thank you very much for watching and I really hope you've enjoyed the video.